All right, next we are gonna move on to the use of chairs. Chairs come in a massive variety of variations. We can have stools and office chairs, fixed chairs and rolling chairs. Here I'm using a very lightweight folding chair. Um, it's obviously a lot safer and easier to control, easier to manipulate, but by all means, I remember when I was working the bar with these huge oak chairs that would just slide out and I would practice all the same mobility with them. Depending on your relative size, your tactics will be limited. So I'm gonna start with the very, very simplest thing to do. Um, again, can't overemphasize the simple enough, but when somebody's up, and you need to find that distance where you feel comfortable getting out. The mistake people make when leaving a chair is this. They step forward, they lean with the head first and they come up. And that's generally where the sucker punch will occur. There's um, a body work approach known as the Alexander Method, also the Feldenkrais Method, where they have one very interesting drill where they take scales with needles, the non-digital style, the old needle style scale, and they put one scale under each foot. And obviously if I stand up on them, I should have some degree of shared weight. If I'm 200 pounds, I should have roughly 100 pounds per foot. And if I see one's heavier than the other, then it's, it's an indication that I'm off balance. But more than that, they'll put the scales under the feet. It's an interesting exercise. Most people, when they get up, will exceed their actual weight by 20, 30 pounds. The needle will go past and come back because they're using some degree of momentum and inertia to get up. What that means tactically is that I'm shaking that flute in my ear and I'm usually offering my head and easy to get hit. So what I want to do instead is I want to think of my pubis, of my pelvic floor, and I want to try to come up as straight as possible so that if my head is kind of behind this wall, it never really passes that. And as soon as I get up, I'm looking usually to displace. I go left with the left foot, right with the right foot. As self-evident as that sounds, I cannot tell you how many times we see people, when they do the slow work, getting up like that, stepping with the wrong foot, and then as soon as they get into a little bit of pressure, they step through the chair, they trip, and they fall. So when I get up, again, it's my, my, my tailbone's getting up, and I sidestep wide with the leg closest, and then go to the side. I should look immediately to get contact with that chair. I'm aware of it with my hands right away. So if I have somebody in front of me and I see that things aren't going well, I decide I can stand, I'm looking right away to touch it. From there, the easiest ways to get that chair up, usually I try, even though it's light, I try not to rely on my arm and I try not to do anything that's gonna use my back. I'm usually looking to hinge and to use my thigh to bring it up as fast as possible. And usually it's a hinge and a drive. I'm looking for that fastest first strike that I can get. The heavier the chair, the better. I want to just practice seeing that I can come out with my tailbone and rock it up. And if I decide that chair is too heavy, it's one of the first things you see when you sit down, you assess that chair, then the, the, the second option, which is good in both cases, is I get up and I'm looking to, to just throw the chair forward, which is why we got those legs padded up. Yeah, I'm throwing it towards them. I'm either going to, I'm not going to stay there for a stare down. I'm either going to step off that line, throw it towards them and follow, you know, stepping off and hitting, or I'm going to use that opportunity to flee, or if it's a security scenario, call backup, or whatever the case is. 